man goes to a doctor, he's depressed, says life is harsh and cruel, says he feels all alone in this threatening world, what lies ahead is vague and uncertain. The doctor says, treatment simple, the great clown Pagliacci is in town tonight, go see him, that should pick you up. The man bursts into tears and says, but, Doctor, I am Pagliacci. <laughs> hello, hello. My name is Boris the Clown, and you're watching Clown Lore. In this series, we go over clowns like Coco, clowns like Pietro, and clowns like slapstick. But today, we talk about a clown like Pagliacci. But before we talk about him, let's go into history. Opera. Yes, we're talking about opera. Opera was born in Italy 400 years into the Renaissance. Inspired heavily by Greek tragedy, it has survived to the modern day as a classic art form. The creators of the art seemingly loved Greek tragedy and wanted to bring it back. This want to revive Greek tragedy brought them La Daphine by Jacopato Berry and Jacopato Corsi. I don't know, they both have the name Jacopato. And after hundreds of years, Ruggiero Leons Cavello brought us the story of Pagliacci. Now, Pagliacci, literally translated to clowns, is an opera that tells the story of Canio. He's an actor and the leader of an art company, but he finds out his wife, Netta, is cheating on him. And while it is old, Pagliacci is still widely performed, and this is where we enter the play. So the opera starts with a man calling out that he is the prologue. And he explains how the author of the play is trying to revive old Greek customs of theater, and that's why he's there. And this is where we start. The act opens in August to the sounds of trumpets, and here enters our clown of the hour, Pagli- I, I, I mean, I guess it's Canio. Canio, his wife Netta, and Tonio are actors, Canio playing the great clown Pagliacci. Netta and Tonio play lovers separated by Netta's marriage to Pagliacci. Once the play is over, Canio bangs drums to drown everyone else's singing out, which works. They stop. Now, with everyone's attention, he announces the show for 11 o'clock that night. Canio's wife, Netta, gets unwanted flirting from Tonio. Canio splits up the two, and Canio is mocked. A villager tries to warn Canio about Tonio and his wife, but Canio warns the entire town that it's best not to even joke like that. And if he is cheated on by his wife, he will take her life. A bit of time later, and the show has ended, Canio goes to take off his Pagliacci costume and leaves Netta alone. And so Tonio tries to slide in. He tries to romance Netta, but she isn't having any of it. But does he back off? Nope. He doubles down. He tries to kiss her, which earns a whip across the face. I know. This guy must be so fun to hang around. People must be lining up to befriend this guy. But he wants revenge on Netta, so ne he leaves, and Netta stays behind. She thinks she hears someone outside. Netta thinks it's Tonio again, but it's actually her real-life lover, Silvio. She actually likes Silvio. They speak of fleeing town, away from Tonio, away from Canio. They declare their love for each other, but guess who's watching? It's Tonio. In the end, they decide they are going to flee together, and Canio catches the two trying to escape. He tries to get the full name of Netta's lover, but she won't give it to him, and he ends up stabbing her. The second act is, uh, well, kind of the, like the first act, but with the characters of the Pagliacci play, you know, the play that's in the play, but it's really similar to the real-life story of the play that plays out. Kind of like how uh, the whole question of does art mimic life, or does life mimic art, you know? And now, I've tried my best to be accurate, and after all that research, I did find out this play is actually based off of a real crime. 
but the clowniness of this play, eh, I don't know. It's kind of iffy for me. But that being said, please subscribe and ring that bell too. I have been Boris, and I'll see you in the next episode of Clown Lore. Bye!